I already did a video deriving the equation of motion for a damped harmonic oscillator. So let's just set up the situation. I'm not going to derive it. I am going to show you the solution. And then I'm, I want to plot it. Okay, we want to make graphs. I want to make both uh, position versus time and phase based plots. That's what we're going to do here. It's going to take as long as it takes. We're going to be here and no matter what. Okay, so I have a mass connected to a spring. Spring constant K, mass M. Uh, and there's also a drag force that depends on the velocity. That's an X dot, dummy. Okay. So the force on it is negative KX, pulls it back to the center, and then the force in the opposite direction of velocity. X dot is the velocity. Uh, <clears throat> X dot is our notation for DX DT. And this is going to be equal to the mass times X double dot, which is the acceleration, the second derivative with respect to time. With that, I can uh, divide both sides by m and add these to the other side. I get x double dot plus b over m x dot plus k over m x equals zero. And again, I'm going through this super fast because I'm not actually solving this. So now let's let k over m equal omega zero squared and let b over m be two beta. And if you say, why does it have to be 2 beta? Why 2? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it doesn't until you get to the part where it makes sense. It just makes things simple. You don't have to do that. It just makes it a lot more simple. And then so what you do is you have a, a weird differential equation here. One of the things, you get this characteristic, what's it called? This equation. Uh, and so you know you have uh, a solution of the form x of the function of t is c1 equals c1 e to the uh, R1t plus C2e to the R2t, where R1 and R2 are solutions to the quadratic equation you get from this thing, uh, where you make it a differential quadratic equation, essentially, uh, such that R1 and 2, R1 and 2, is equal to beta plus or minus the square root of beta squared minus omega naught squared. That's, that's that term that comes from the quadratic equation. Okay, so now we have to do, some, and remember this beta term depends on the drag parameters. Omega naught depends on the spring parameters. And you can see here if you have, uh, this, it's possible this could be an imaginary number, so let's deal with what is not imaginary. So let's say that beta is greater than omega naught. So, and that, uh, I guess I should write this. Up. No, I'll, I'll write it out. So let's write out this expression for beta greater than or equal to omega naught. In that case, this term is going to be not negative. So now I get x as a function of t is uh, c1 e to this thing. Yeah. c1, I was just trying to write it the right. So now I'm going to have uh, let's actually call the square root of beta squared minus omega naught squared, since it comes up a lot, let's call that equal to omega 1. It's just a, it's just a constant, right? It doesn't matter. So this is going to be equal to beta plus that. No, this is negative. Ha, caught it. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be e to the negative beta plus omega 1 times t, plus c2, because that's that r1, plus c2 e to the negative beta minus omega 1 times t. And those are real numbers, so it's all good. These are exponentially decaying terms. We're all set. We're not now, but if I want to plot that, I have a problem, right? Because I need to know c1 and c2. So we're going to find c1 and c2 based off the initial conditions. So my initial conditions are at t equals 0, x is x0, x dot of 0 is v0. So I need to find what c1 and c2 are. And this is the part that, I mean, everyone, a lot of books just say, oh, initial conditions. But if you want to plot it, right, you have to know the initial, you have to know c1 and c2 if you want to actually make a graph. And we want to actually make a graph. Okay, so let's just write our function up here one more time x as a function of t. And some people factor out this e to the negative beta t term, but we'll do that later. x equals c1 e to the negative beta plus omega t plus 
C2 e to the negative beta minus omega 1 t. Okay, so I'm going to first set this function equal to, to x0 at t equals 0. So I can say uh, x0 equals x at time t equals 0. So if I put in t equals 0, well, I have e to the 0, which is 1. So I just get c1. And then here I have e to the 0, which is just c2. So that gives me x0 equals c1 plus c2. And I'm doing this for the case where beta is greater than uh, omega naught. That's not omega naught. That's omega 1. Omega 1. Okay, so I, I don't know c1 and c2. Now I need to do, use the velocity. So to get the velocity, I need to find the velocity. So I need to take the derivative, x dot as a function of t. I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to time. So the derivative of this with respect to time, e to the something t is e to the something t, but then I have to take the derivative of this stuff up here. So I get c1 negative beta plus omega 1 e to the negative beta plus omega 1 t plus c2, and I take the derivative of this, I get uh, negative beta minus omega 1 e to the minus beta minus omega 1 t. Now I can plug in x dot of 0 is v0, and that's going to be, if I put in 0 for time, this term is going to be e to the 0, which is 1. This term is going to be e to the 0, which is 1. So I get c1 negative beta plus omega 1, plus C2, negative beta, minus omega 1. So here I have two equations, two unknowns, right? So I have C1 and C2 are my unknowns. Beta, omega 1, I know. And X1, X0, and X0, I, I know them. I don't know what they are right now, but they're, they're knowable things. Um, so let me just make a little substitution here. I'm going to say A equals negative beta plus omega 1. Because it gets a little messy, and it's going to get messier, but I don't really care. Uh, and I'm going to call this, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call that B because I already used B. So I'm going to call it D, and that's going to be negative beta minus omega 1. So now I can rewrite this equation. I'm, in fact, going to divide, so let's just rewrite this. V0 equals... Uh, a C1 plus D C2. Now I'm going to divide both sides by A. And this is a trick. I'm just solving two equations to a known, so I'm just making a little trick. So I get V0 over A equals C1 plus D over A C2. Now if I take this equation, see they both have a C1. If I take this and I subtract this, I get X0 minus V0 over A, right, because I just... That's this side. I got to subtract the other side. So I have C1 minus C1, which is zero, and it goes away. And then I have uh, plus C2 times one minus D over A, right? Because I factored out. It's C2 minus C2 D over A, but I factored out the C2. Now, oh wait, equals. I'm making a lot of mistakes already. Let's see how this is going to go. Uh, now I can solve this for C2 by dividing both sides by this, and I get C2. This is important. C2 equals x0 minus v0 over a over 1 minus d over a. And I think that you could simplify this, but I don't care at this point because it's just algebra, and I just really don't. I'm not interested in that. I want to make a graph. Um, okay. So, and then I need to find C1. Well, that's pretty easy. Up here, C1 is just going to be equal to X0 minus C2. So, there you go. Okay. So, I'm going to use this function to plot. I'm actually going to calculate this, too. I'm just going to first plot this as a function of time. Uh, and I need to pick some parameters, right? I need to pick parameters for uh, A, no, uh, for mass, K, B, and then the initial positions and velocity. So I've already done that. I already typed in there because that's just super boring. Uh, so, but we're going to now make a graph of x as a function of t, and then I'm going to do x dot as a function of x, which is a phase space plot. I'm going to make both those plots. 
Uh, so let's switch over to Python, and I'm going to give you the code for this, so don't worry about the code. And then I'm going to show you how to check it, too. Okay, so here we are. Hello, computer. So I already put some stuff in here. I got a little head start. So T, the time step DT, uh, the mass is 50 grams, B is 0.5, K is 0.5. I don't know why I picked that. X0 is 0.1, V0 is negative 0.3. I thought it might be fun just to change it up a little bit. Um, x dot that's something i use later let's just delete that for now and then i need to calculate beta right because i have beta in my thing i'm using capital b for beta it's just b over 2m it's we define it that way and i need to calculate omega zero which i'm calling w zero uh, again we define it that way omega one uh let's i didn't get to omega two yet i'll get there is no that's backwards Omega one, I said was I did the I, I copied this over from another code. What did I say omega one was? Bit beta squared minus omega squared. So got this backwards. We'll get to well, that's gonna probably make me make a mistake because I, I switched things up, but whatever. Life is about mistakes making mistakes. Okay, so now I need to calculate all my stuff, right? So I need to calculate uh a, D, C1, and C2. So let's say A, I'm just going to type A equals negative beta uh, plus omega 1. D equals negative beta minus omega 1. And if you want to go back and like get rid of A and D, that's fine. But I don't, it doesn't matter. I don't need to do that. Uh, so now I can calculate C2 equals uh, X0 minus V0 over a, all of that divided by 1 minus d over a. And then c1 is x0 minus c2. So I have c1 and c2 now. That's cool. Uh, I have my time. So let's go ahead and make a graph. So I'm going to add my graph in here. Uh, g1 equals graph. Uh, should I give it a title? Yeah, let's give it a title. Equals damped oscillator. Uh, X title is going to be equal to time in seconds. Y title is X in meters. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a width too because I like it's too big. So let's say width equals 500, height equals 200. Now I need a graph to graph. So I'm going to say F1 equals G curve, color equals color dot blue. So that's my that's how I'm gonna make my graph. My graph's gonna be plotting points F1, but the G1 is the, the encapsulation of the graph. You don't actually have to have G1 graph. It just won't show any labels on the axis. Okay, so down here now I'm gonna do a loop. So I'm gonna say let's do while t is less than three. Uh, I I don't need to to do this in real time, but I'm going to just because I'm thinking about it. So I'll go up here and I'm gonna say dot equals true. This will put a dot at the point where it's currently at uh, rate 100. So since I have a time step of 0.01, uh, rate 100 means it'll take three seconds to it'll do no more than 100 loops per second. So now I'm going to calculate x. So I'm going to call this, uh, yeah, x equals, now I'm just using my equation, c1 times exponent e to the negative b plus omega 1 times t. So I need another parentheses here. Oops. Okay, well, that was weird. Okay, so I got it all there. Plus c2 times exp negative beta minus omega 1 lowercase times t. That's it. Now I just need to update t. t equals t plus dt. Oh, I'm going to plot before that. F1 dot plot uh, T X. I'm going to have T on the horizontal axis, X on the vertical axis, and that should do it. Let's see if it does indeed do it. Um, let's save it and then run it. Okay, so it started at X equals 1 with the initial downward velocity, and then it just decays down. Uh, to that. So that seems good. 
right? It seems like it's okay. Let's go ahead and make a phase space plot too. So a phase plot's gonna have position versus velocity. Uh, it should be pretty easy to do. The only thing I need to do up here, I need another graph because it's gonna have different axes. So let's call this G2 equals graph. Let's just copy all this. Even though it's different. Graphed, uh, let's not put a title because it's still the damned oscillator. And then X title is gonna be X in meters. And then the Y title is a V in meters per second. And uh, I like to have this square since it's, so it's, I'm gonna have 400 by 400. And then I need a new graph, so let's call this F, uh, let's call it P1 for phase equals G curve color, oops, color equals color dot blue dot equals true. And then down here, the thing I need to do is to calculate the derivative. So let's call this X dot. And now I, I can just copy, I, I've already did, done that over here. It's uh, C1 times negative beta plus omega, omega one times all this stuff. I don't have to recopy that, right? And then let's just copy this whole thing. Plus paste, and this is C2, and this is gonna be minus, and then minus. So then my other graph, I can say F2 dot plot, X, X dot. Let's see if that works. And it didn't. Can't find F2, because I didn't call it F2, dummy. I called it P1. For phase. Remember I said, do you not remember? I said fa P for phase. You weren't listening. I wasn't listening. Okay, so that's that same graph. Uh, there's my phase space plot. So the phase space plot, I like the animation because then it starts here. Let's see, it says it starts at uh, a velocity of negative three and x equals one, and then it's moving back towards, this is x equals zero, v equals zero. That's the origin right there. It stops at the origin, right? That, so that's where it's gonna end up. So I kind of like that. Okay, now, but you always think, but am I right? Is this even right? Um, so let me jump back over here and do a, uh, let me do uh, a quick tutorial on numerical calculations. Because in this case, using initial conditions, it's way easier to do with the numerical calculations. So let me show you how that works. Uh, switching to paper. So here we're back at the paper. So I'm gonna start right here with this differential equation. But I'm gonna solve it for x double dot. So I can write this as x double dot equals negative b over m minus k, oops, I'm all sloppy. k over m, x double dot equals negative b over m x minus k over x dot, k over m, x. So I can calculate the acceleration. That's the acceleration uh, at any time, right? Because these change with time. But let's assume that I say delta t equals 0 0.01, and I'll even make it smaller in a little bit. And during that small time interval, I assume that x double dot is constant. It's not constant, but I'm going to assume it is. Then I can say x double dot is delta x dot delta t. It's the change in velocity with respect to time. And this could be x2 dot minus x1 dot over delta t, where x1 dot is the velocity at the beginning of the time interval, x2 dot is at the end of the time interval. I can solve for x2 dot and I get x2 dot equals x1 dot plus x double dot delta t. Then I can assume x2 dot is constant. So x2 dot is delta x delta t. And I can do the same thing. This is x2 minus x1 over delta t. So I get x2 equals x1 plus x2 dot, because I just calculated that velocity, delta t. And there you have it. That's my numerical calculation. 
I do that for one time step. I do it for the next time step. I do it. So, so every time step, I start off, I calculate x double dot. Then I calculate, I update x two dot or x dot. And then I cal update x. But all of this means that the first time I do it, I have to have those initial conditions. I have to have an initial x and an initial x dot. So I know they're part of the, the numerical calculation. So let's go ahead and plot that on our graph as a separate solution. Switching back to computer, here we are. Scroll up. Okay. So I'm gonna need some more graphs. I'm gonna need some more variables. So let's just go ahead and add this in here. I'm gonna say F2 equals G curve, color equals color dot red. Uh, dot equals true. And then P2 equals G curve is the same thing. Oh, well, it's G curve, curve, color equals color dot red dot equals true. Um, I have my T's already there. I have all that. I have my initial positions, but I need an initial, I need a velocity and a position. And it has to be different, right? Because I use X and, and X dot. So I'm going to call this X in equals X zero. And I think that'll be okay. Yeah, don't change it. Uh, and then I'm going to say X in dot equals V zero. Right. So X in is going to be my numerical calculation of X and X in dots going to be my numerical calculation, but I'm setting my initial conditions right there. Uh, so I don't need all this other stuff right here. I don't need that. Okay. Uh, I, I need to calculate X double dot, which I'm going to call X in double dot. X in double DD dot is going to be equal to negative K times X in divided by M minus b lowercase b times x in dot divided by m that's just my differential equation that's all i did i'm using x in and x in dot instead of x because i want to have two variables now once i calculate x in double dot i can use that to update x in dot so x in dot equals x in dot plus x in double dot times dt and then i can update x in x in equals x in plus x in dot times dt. And I don't have to put indices 1, 2, and 3, 4, because I'm just changing the variable. I don't have a whole bunch of variables. I'm just changing these variables. That's that. So now I can plot them. So f2 dot plot t x in, p2 dot plot x in, x in dot. And so you can see from an initial conditions situation, if you want to make a graph, the numerical calculation is so much easier. Uh, okay, let's run it. I didn't save it. And something happened. P2 pot. That's easy to fix. P2 plot. Is that my only error? Wow. I amazed myself. Okay, so you'll see here that the two solutions are not identical. They're not identical, but they're very close. Uh, the, both, for both the position versus time and the phase space. And they're not completely close because, remember, we're making that approximation that the acceleration is constant and it's not. Uh, we can make this a little bit better by making a smaller time interval, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. What I want to do, I'm going to save this. This is for an over-damped situa situation. You can make it. I'm going to leave it for you. Okay. It doesn't look that much different. Uh, if you go over here, if you uh, change the value of B, you can make it critically damped. Critically damped is where beta is equal to omega naught. And so you get a, a different term. Um, but the initial conditions still work. So it doesn't really matter what those values are. Now, what about the underdamped situation? For underdamped, uh, then we have a problem. And so let's, do, let's redo the, this initial conditions for an underdamped situation, which, and again, I've already derived underdamped. So I'm just going to do the initial conditions part. I need more paper. Okay, so here we are for um, the so the underdamped is when remember that we have uh, omega one is equal to the square root of beta squared minus omega naught squared. 
So underdamped would be when beta, which is depending on the, the drag term, is less than omega naught. But if beta is less than omega naught, then this term is going to be negative, and we're going to get the square root of a negative number. So one way to solve that, and we still have the same solution, x as a function of t is going to be, uh, I'm going to, let me write it out. Okay, c1 e to the negative beta plus omega 1 t plus c2 e to the negative beta minus omega 1 t. So one of the things we can do is to fact, I can write this as c1 e to the negative beta t times e to the negative, or no, positive, positive omega 1 t plus c2 e to the negative beta t e to the negative omega 1 t. And then I can factor out the e to the negative beta t, and so I get x as a function of t is e to the negative beta t times c1 e to the omega 1 t plus c2 e to the negative omega 1 t. Uh, but omega 1 is imaginary. That's the problem. So let's write that as a non-imaginary term. So I'm going to say that if that's omega 1, omega 2 is going to be equal to the square root of omega naught squared minus beta squared, right? But that, that just switches this around. So this is actually the same thing as omega 2 is equal to i omega 1. So if I put that, oh, omega 1 is i omega 2, that's right. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Checking my notes. I did actually write notes because I make mistakes all the time. Omega 2, yeah, that, see, this would be a negative sign. If I put a negative and factor out, I get an i, and then I get omega 1. So this is right. Omega, no, it was right before. It doesn't matter. Omega 2 is equal to i omega 1. I'm going to write it that way. So if I put that over here, I get x as a function of t, e to the negative beta t, c1, e to the, oh, that's right, i omega 1 t, plus c2, e to the minus i omega, that's a 1, omega 1 t. But this is an oscillating term, right? Because I have e to the i omega t, e to the negative i omega t. You can use the Euler equation, which I have a video going over, and convert this into sines and cosines. So I can actually write this as the following. Uh, e to the negative beta t times some other constant, a cosine omega 1 t plus b sine omega 1 t t. Those are in parentheses technically. But I still need to find a and b. So let's do the same thing we did before. x at 0 is equal to x0. So if I put in t equals 0, this term becomes 1. So that's fine. And then I put in 0 right here, I get a. And then I put 0 in for sine, I get 0. So a is x0. Yay, that was easy. OK, now for uh, the velocity, I need to take the derivative of this. So let's take the derivative of this term, x dot as a function of t. So uh, the derivative of, I'm doing it down here. So I'm going to take the derivative of this, which is this negative beta times that. So I get negative beta e to the negative beta t. And then I have to multiply by a cosine omega 1 t plus b. Is it OK if I don't put parentheses around that? I think it is. b, and I should have used something other than b. That's not b, right? That's it's not the b. It's not beta. Uh, b sine omega 1 t. But now I've taken the derivative of this stuff, so I get uh, plus e to the negative beta t times the derivative of this is going to be negative a omega 1 sine omega 1 t. And then the derivative of this is going to be plus b omega 1 cosine omega 1 t. So that's my derivative. 
that's going to be important later too. Um, okay, now I'm going to say x dot of 0 is v0. So if I put in t equals 0, that term becomes 1. So I get negative beta times, if I put in t equals 0, I get a cosine omega t, which is just x naught, right? a is x naught, and then that term is 0. And then this term, that one's 1, and then this term 0, I get uh, plus, that's a beta, plus b omega 1 times cosine of 0, which is 1. So now I want to solve this for b, which I can do. So b omega 1 equals v0 plus beta x naught. So b equals v0 over omega 1 plus beta over omega 1 x0. So now I have a and b. a is x0. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot this. Now that I have the terms, right, I have a and b for both uh, x and x dot, I can redo this whole thing. So let's switch back over to the code. Back to the computer. Okay, what I'm going to do is just copy all this. And I'm going to make a new, let's start a new, win, a new win, window. Um, a new program. I could just send copy. That would that would make more sense. Let's just do that copy. And this one's copy. Okay, and let's save it as uh, un underdamped. Oops. Underdamped both plot. That's good enough. That way I don't have to redo all my graphs and stuff like that. Save it. Okay, well, let's run it. Um, so now I don't need all that. All that T stuff's the same. All the XN's the same. Uh, one of the things I do need to change is to have a smaller, I wanted to make it under damp. So B, beta has to be less than omega naught. So let's just put this at, at 1, 0.1. I think that should be small enough. Uh, and then down here, I don't, I'm not going to calculate these, right? I'm going to calculate new coefficients. A equals X0. B equals, I'm going to call that, I can't call B. It's made a mistake there. B, B. B, B is V0 divided by omega 1 plus beta times X0 divided by omega 1. Now, uh, this stuff, the numerical part doesn't change. It's identical. But I do need to change my, X, my actual X calculation. So let's delete that. I can say exponential negative beta times T times parentheses a times cosine omega 1 times t plus bb times sine omega 1 times t. So that's my x. I need to do x dot now, which I just took the derivative, so that's cool. It's going to be a little bit longer, but that's fine. I'm just going to write this out. Negative beta times exponent negative beta times t times parentheses a times cosine omega 1 times t plus bb times sine omega 1 times t. That's that first term. Then the second term, I'm going to put it as plus, let's, let's just put it on the next, I don't know if I can do that, let's, plus uh, exponent negative beta times t times parentheses negative a times omega 1 times sine omega 1 times t plus b times omega 1 times cosine omega 1 times t. Okay, I think that's it. And it should work. Will it? You never know. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it. Okay, I don't only see one graph. It looks like it's working though, but that's, let's save this. Is that not save? Okay, just save. Why did it not plot two? So which one's red? You know what? I must have made an error. The blue one is not plotting. Okay. So X, A, E to the negative A, T, oh, B, B. That's what I did wrong. This is B, B. 
That's BB. B, that's beta. BB, BB. I think that's right. I think that's all I did. If that's all I did, I can give myself a double high five. Nope, that's not all I did. Okay. What did I do wrong? It's something in this equation. E to the negative beta t times a cosine omega 1 t plus b sine omega 1 t x dot negative b x. Huh. I got it working, I promise you. Um, so I think it's just something in the code. You can see what it looks like. Uh, and the two, the, two, the two things are not complete on top of each other because you know, one is an approximation. Uh, but that is a damped oscillator with initial conditions. That's a numerical version. And that's the phase space plot. It kind of spirals around until it gets back to the origin. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to fix this. So when you look at this code, it's going to be fixed. Um, but there's just a, it has to be just a simple typo error. If you see it, that's, that's cool. And I, I give you a thumbs up for that. I don't get the double high five because I didn't get it correct in the thing. But the most important thing is how do you find those initial conditions for those two situations. So you can treat the uh, over damped and critically damped the same way, but since we have uh, imaginary numbers in the under damped, we have to rewrite the equation, which means we have to resolve for the initial conditions. Uh, and there might be a trick in solving those initial conditions for the first uh, over damped, critically damped, but I just didn't see it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, links down below to stuff. If you have a question, let me know. And that's that.